Good afternoon, everybody. <clears throat> it is exactly four o'clock. Happy Wednesday, everybody, and welcome to our third installment of our webinar series, Your PGCE as Your Roadmap for Change. These webinars are designed to empower you to make an informed decision on where to pursue your PGCE qualification to amplify your social impact. My name is Rudy Mahi, my pronouns are they and them, and I am a teacher coach at the Jake's Heibel Fellowship. I will be your host this afternoon. Let's manage some expectations. This session will provide some insight into the day-to-day -day lives of our JGF candidate fellows and teachers and how they anticipate using their PGCE qualification to drive their own social impact. This will be followed by a live question and answer session with our candidate fellows. Right, before we dive into the session, let's acknowledge our namesake, our namesake Prof. Jakes Chadwell. You might have heard on the traffic in uh, news in Cape Town about traffic on Jakes Chadwell Road. However, his story is so much more profound than the traffic. Prof. Jakes Chadwell was an academic and an anti-apartheid activist. He served as the Director General of the Presidency when Nelson Mandela was in office. He also, fun fact, was Nelson Mandela's chief speechwriter. Not only was he a lecturer and a rector of the University of the Western Cape, he was also a high school teacher. And this resonates really deeply with everyone here at JGF. And it's what we're all about, nurturing high school teachers in transforming the South African education landscape. As an overview of this webinar series, we've hosted the University of Pretoria and University of the Western Cape on Monday and Tuesday, respectively. Following our session today, keep an eye out for our upcoming sessions featuring UCT, WIT, and Stellenbosch University. Wrapping up the series, we have the University of Johannesburg next Tuesday, the 31st of May. That said, if you know of anyone who will benefit from these webinars and who will slay at being a teacher, please do direct them to our social media platforms. This series will be available as on-demand webinars as well on our YouTube channel. Tweet about us. Your hashtag is JGF Roadmap for Change. So before we jump in, I would love to just explain a little bit what the Jakes Chadwell Fellowship is all about. At the Jakes Chadwell Fellowship, we believe the future is created with intention. So we actively work to construct a world in which every child is enrolled in a quality school, staffed by expert teachers dedicated to releasing their learners' full potential. We also believe that it only takes a small group of people to create change in the world big thinking, bold dreamers who share our vision of the future and have the highest likelihood of solving the most pressing education challenges that South Africa faces. This is why we invest in individuals who have the potential to improve the quality of education and thereby drive a much needed shift towards a more equitable, socially just and prosperous country. As a Jake Scavel Fellow, you will gain a launch pad from which to craft your impact in the world an inspirational community that walks alongside you and supports your journey, as well as the best possible learning experiences to set you up for long-term success as an expert teacher, educational leader, or social entrepreneur. Our involvement continues into an alumni community of practice that fosters collaboration and aims to leverage fellow influence and leadership towards broader systemic change. Becoming a Jake's Chavel Fellow is an opportunity to reach your high impact goals, meet like-minded thinkers, and create positive change in the world. Find out more and apply at www.jgfellowship.org. All right. None of us would be here today 
if not for the teachers who groomed and developed us. I will never forget how Mrs. Spencer believed in me when no other teacher would. And once she found out that I am a reader, she gave me a book every week to provide feedback on. And in many ways, Ma'am Spence is the reason I became a teacher myself. I'd love to know a little more about who your favorite teacher was and why. Let us know in the chat. Let us see in the chat. Favorite teachers. For me, it's between two, Mr. Niemand and Mr. Watson both influenced me greatly. That is from Daniel McAslin. Let's see, are there any more inspirational teachers who have groomed and developed us? Mrs. Dutoy, making all Afrikaans lessons exciting and always reminding us how special we are. That's from Jade Glenn. You know, it's so important. Teachers uh, teachers make us feel special and that, that, that spark continues throughout life. Let's keep those comments coming. Who was your favorite teacher and why? Right, I see no more comments coming through in the chat, but do keep those coming throughout the session. We would love to know who your favorite teacher was. Here we go from Tulian Kursi. All my English teachers, yes, Mrs. Short, Mrs. Spanos, they were such rock stars. You know, teachers are such rock stars uh, in, in every setting. This is also lovely, and I hope every one of you eventually becomes just that teacher. Before I hand over to our guests this afternoon, let's go through some ground rules. Uh, ahead of us, we have a little bit of a panel discussion, and to bring everyone in the room, I would like us to all switch our videos off. And then the second step is to hide non-video participants. Our panel and our facilitator for this afternoon will keep their videos on. And in that way, we see what is important. Please follow those, uh, those, those, those prompts on the screen to hide the non-video pa uh, participants and for the panelists to leave your videos on. Our facilitator tonight is none other than the amazing Jade Glenn. I've worked with Jade and every time I, I interact with her, I'm, I just leave the room feeling more inspired and more, more capable and, and more in charge. And Jade does, does this thing where she, she really unlocks potential in, in, in our teachers uh, who, who are working in, in the classrooms. Our panelists this afternoon are super close to our hearts over at JGF. We select only the best because our education system, our schools, our learners, parents, and communities deserve only the best teachers to develop future generations of change, uh, change makers. Firstly, we have Siziwe Mwana, she, her. In her uh, studying biological and agricultural science at the University of Pretoria. Siziwa's passion for education is making it a place where everyone feels valued and gets a shot at their dreams. From Soweto and growing up there, her journey in being a candidate fellow has made her value equality and working to build other people like herself to being the best version of themselves. Next up, we have Lerato Monguni, she, her, who is a history teacher at Weinberg Girls High School, a JGF candidate fellow, teacher, entrepreneur. She holds an undergraduate degree in political sciences from the University of Johannesburg and a postgraduate certificate in education from the University of Cape Town. Up next, we have Palesa Mlambo, Palesa is currently completing her PGCE in English at WITS and is from Newcastle KZN and completed a BA in philosophy and psychology at the University of Zululand. Palesa comes from a family of teachers and has been grading papers ever since. 
Lastly, we have Daniel McAslin. He, him, is a fun-loving and community-oriented person who is most at home on the sports field or with friends. He is passionate about seeing people grow through their education into nation builders and the leaders of a better world. At this stage, I will hand over to Jade Glenn, who will take us further on this panel discussion. Jade, over to you. Rudy, thank you so much for that introduction and the warm welcome. Good afternoon to everybody who's joining us and especially to our panel. We cannot wait to hear more about your insights on JGF. So I'm going to start off with Siziwe. And you have recently been onboarded to the fellowship in your first year. I would like if you could please provide our audience with some insight into how your life has been impacted since becoming part of the JGF program. Hi Jade, um, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. I am honored. Um, the journey of being part of the JGF team was not entirely easy for me, I tell you that. Um, we were informed in high school about the Ellen Gray Orbis Foundation and when I went on the website, I thought that was that, but then it was only when I started filling out my application that I realized that, oh my God, this is actually what I want to do. This is, I want to be an impact teacher. I want to, you know, I want to do things. <laughs> And when I applied in university, um, the course that I applied for and that I, I was admitted to study for did not exactly align with teaching. I didn't know about the PGCE program or anything related to that. And I gave up. Mm -hmm. So I thought I'd lost my opportunity of being a candidate fellow. And when Mr. Jeremy, who I used to call Mr. James, <laughs> called to ask why I wasn't part of the interviews, why I wasn't part of the selection camp and all that, he'd explain to me how all of that works. And now that I am a candidate fellow and I'm a first year, um, I feel like as a first year, you tend to get masked and overwhelmed by a lot of things, especially mm -hmm. because you know, you're know you moving from you know a different place, you're moving to a completely different environment. And so you tend to lose your end goal, your focus. And I feel like, with JGF's presence, I was able to kind of focus all of my energies into being an impact teacher, regardless of what I'm going through and where I am at the moment. And also understanding how I can get there. I think that's the biggest impact JGF has had on me thus far. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that, Suzy. I'm glad to hear that JGF could sort of keep you on that road of focus, um, you know, to becoming that impact teacher that you're dreaming of becoming. Daniel, we're moving over to you. And I would like us to go on an adventure in the future. So here's the scene. You are a qualified teacher who is engaging real life learners in a real classroom. What skills did JGF develop in you as a teacher in the present? that you use in your day-to-day -day classroom. Thanks, Jade. Hello, everybody. Um, I hope you're all having an absolutely fantastic, fantastic day. Um, so obviously looking to the future, um, hopefully when, you know, not hopefully when I do become a teacher, um, I think that JGF gives phenomenal, phenomenal lessons um, to develop its candidate fellows, um, to make us better um, all-around people. And then, you know, that also, more, you know, all around people, obviously, then becoming good expert teachers. Um, and I think that I said earlier to Rudy, you know, I could I could write a book about um, all of the things, all of the skills, all of the all of the things which JGF um, develops in you. But for me personally, um, there's a couple of things which I've just highlighted in my couple of months as a as a Canada fellow. And and the first is developing a community orientation. JGF is very community orientated, and I think that when you're in a classroom environment. Um, being community orientated, um, both within your learners, within your learners community, but then also being in a community orientation within the school, it just makes you a better teacher. It, it, it pushes you to being an expert teacher. And then um, developing an understanding of support systems um, is something that JGF, again, puts an emphasis on is understanding your own support systems and then also understanding how you can be a support system for, for, for learners one day. Um, you know, and being able to be there for them in a whole bunch of different environments. Um, and then, you know, JGF, again, another thing that for me personally has stood out is that they put a big, big emphasis on always learning. Um, you never stop learning. You know, you, 
you're learning whether you're a 70 year old headmaster or headmistress um you know you're learning now when you're a first year intern or still a student you know you're always learning um and i think jgf encourages us to always learn and i think that that is a massive massive asset to becoming an expert teacher um so like i said i mean you could write a book about everything that jgf develops in you but for me those things are just you know that those are imp impacts my life personally you know. thanks Jay. Thanks so much, Daniel. It was just lovely hearing the words, you know, support system, community. Um, and once again, just wrapping it all up into this is what's going to make me an expert teacher. So thank you for sharing. Palesa, you have recently completed your undergraduate degree in philosophy and psychology. Would you please tell us a little more about how you anticipate using your PGCE qualification to drive your own social impact as a classroom teacher? Um, hi, everyone. Um, thank you so much for your question, Jade. Um, what I learned from my degree was to be more critical, to not really take things at face value. I, I think I've always been curious, but looking back at my high school years, I don't think being curious and asking questions is something that is um, supported or promoted. It's something that is somewhat frowned upon. You're supposed to just take and go. Um, and what I learned doing my degree is to not really take things at face value, to ask questions, to wonder, to dig a bit deeper. And what I look forward to doing is learn, taking what I have learned and putting it in a high school or, or a school environment so that learners and people don't really have to wait until they get to university to learn to be critical thinkers, to learn to um, think more, think critically, to learn that it's okay to ask questions. Asking questions is not a wrong thing. It's a good thing, in fact, I think. Uh, so that is what I look forward to. I think that's really what I want to do. I want to help create a generation or a future where people are more critical and people think things better. I would say people don't just take things at face value, but they they try to look at certain things from different perspectives to find a better solution for something instead of just saying, OK, we always go with A, so let's choose A. But to kind of look at this thing from different <laughs> perspectives instead of just one. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> 100%. Thank you so much, Palesa. And I'm excited to see this generation of curious students who comes from your classroom. Nufuno, you have recently graduated from your PGCE program. So you are full on teaching right now. Um, what an achievement. Honestly, I think we need to just, it's been about five months since you've been in the classroom now. And if you could just take a moment to reflect on the way in which your vision for impact has materialized. And specifically, what has stood out for you? Um, thanks, Jade. Um, yes, um, interesting five months, very challenging. Um, but I think the one thing for me, especially as a history teacher, is trying to ensure that I can, in one way or another, have the kids in my classroom make an impact out of the classroom. But at the same time, to try and get these young people to be part of the solutions of the past injustices that have happened in the world. Um, something that I said when we initially met for the first time was I would like them to be open-minded um, because it's only when they're open-minded that once we start sharing different ideas, um, especially in a, in a very diverse school that I am at, um, this is when you're able to hear the different um, realities that different learners actually have. And it's only through storytelling and these learners sharing these stories that we are able to have a better understanding that yes, we are different and being different is nothing wrong. But at the same time, it's only when we are open-minded that we are able to accept what is different and to accept it as it is without necessarily frowning upon it or judging it or questioning exactly why is it the way it is. Um, there's nothing wrong with being different at all. Um, I think with my grade nine, something that I've recently said and we've been looking at the Holocaust as a topic was, um, guys, imagine if 
looking at Germany, imagine if people were far more kind and accepting of people's religious differences, um, differences in how we look, differences in hair, um, how the world would be such a better place because we'd be far more kind, far more accepting of what is different. And I think I've been able to see that come alive because once, yes, we have these random conversations, we're speaking about hair and um, this one learner comments and says, um, you know, I, I can't go a week without washing my hair and my natural hair obviously is an Afro. So I'm just like, um, so you wash your hair every week or you wash your hair every day. And I feel that it's only because of the comfort in accepting our differences and how the history classroom is that we started talking about hair, which is something off the curriculum, but generally speaking, we tend to shy upon asking these questions because we feel that if I ask the question or if I comment on this in one or another, it will be a bad thing or something bad will come out of it. So I feel like that's the one thing I've been able to achieve. Learners who are comfortable to ask whatever comes to mind, but at the same time, I've been able to let these learners to think outside of the box and to look at their realities outside of the history classroom and the curriculum that we look at in the classroom. So yeah. Thank you so much, Lufuno. And I've been to Lufuno's grade nine class, so I can vouch for her. Um, yes. She, everything that she said, that's what happened. So she's not just answering those questions for five marks. That, that is the true embodiment of what happens. So thank you again, Lufuno. Then to our panelists, I would direct, I would like to direct this question to all of you and Ziwe, simply because you are the first person on my screen um, that I see. I'm going to start with you and then once you've answered, you can nominate anybody else. So the question is, as you are on this journey into the classroom, what are you looking forward to the most? Over to you, Ziwe. Thank you so much, Jade. Um... I think the one thing that we must not shy away from saying is that JGF gives you a lot of information, a lot of skills to learn, a lot of, you know, a lot of practices to go through. So I feel like the most, the one thing that I'm really looking forward to is actually putting all of that work into actual practice and just having a platform where I can see if everything that I've been taught actually works in real life. And also just learning for my learners. I feel like a lot of a lot of teachers kind of shy away from the fact that, you know, you can learn from someone even if they're like 10, four years younger than you, you know. And as much as I am a teacher and my role is to give information, I, I am also really open to accepting information and finding out, you know, some things that I never even thought I would know from, you know, my fellow students. And so, yeah, that's the one thing I'm really looking forward to. Thank you so much, Jade. I'm nominating um, Lufuno. Oh man, <laughs> I was never ready for this one. Um, sheesh, um, I guess the first thing that I generally was looking forward to is being in the classroom and having my own classroom. Then I got into the classroom and I felt very overwhelmed because I really didn't know what to do with the space. Um, looking forward to it, getting there, not necessarily knowing what to do with the space. But the second thing was looking forward to the connections that I could actually form with the learners. Um, it's something that I constantly, constantly appreciate. Um, I have one learner who, you know, initially as you start out, you tend to feel a bit um, or burnt out at times or overwhelmed. And this learner always had a smile on her face. There's no other way. The energy was always the same. And it's through that connection with this learner that I'm always excited and I always want to bring my best to the classroom regardless. So just forming those connections with the learners, it's great. Um, hearing the stories, hearing what they're thinking, um, there's nothing I appreciate more than that. I feel like that's how you're able to see in terms of, am I getting the job right? Am I, you know, am I getting it right? Am I getting it wrong? Um, sometimes the feedback is not verbal, but you tend to, you tend to see it. It's the you know, a learner who never says anything and all of a sudden they say, good morning, ma'am, or all of a sudden they say, bye, ma'am, at the end of the day. And this learner never says anything. So, yeah. And I will nominate Balissa. Thank you, Lufuno. Um, 
Oh, that's, that's a difficult question, eh? Um, I am looking forward to, I don't want to refer to them as my babies, but I'm, I'm looking forward to meeting my learners, my students, my nunus. Um, I'm looking forward to helping them shape their future. I'm looking forward to helping them become the best version of themselves that they can be. I am looking forward to helping them be creative leaders. I am, I'm looking forward to it. I'm nervous, but I am looking forward to it. Uh, I am nominating Daniel. Awesome, thanks, Pelesa. Um, everyone else, yeah, you guys ones are really, really good. So coming off of that, um, we're gonna keep the standard high. Um, but uh, I think I'm most looking forward, you know, personally to seeing students developing. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing them develop academically. Obviously, I mean, they're at school, they're there to get an academic development, but I think to see them developing beyond academics as well, you know, see them developing um, in their social life, seeing them develop um, within, you know, amongst their peers, seeing them develop within the school and all of the extramurals that they, they take part in. Um, and seeing their, their personal development, um, I think to use a bit of a metaphor of thinking, you know, um, to see the, the seeds that are sowed within them um, and to see those seeds take root and to grow into these magnificent trees, um, you know, see these students from the time they come into the school or into my classroom, you know, see them growing from um, someone who has a lot of ability, but then is um, becoming this, this, this new world leader, um, you know, the, uh, the leaders of tomorrow. And I think just that following that development is something which I'm really, really excited to, to first of all, be a part of, but just, just to, to, to watch as well. So, yeah. Thank you so much, Daniel. And to all our panelists again, thank you very, very much. We are supposed to move over to our Q&A session. However, I do not see any questions at the moment. So I will give it a few minutes and just double check the chat. And over there, I have actually got a few questions come through. So these questions are directed to the panelists. Either of you can answer them. So at any point, just unmute and you can go ahead and answer. So question number one, why did you decide to pursue a career in education? Okay, I'll go for it. <laughs> um, so before this, ironically, um, I worked in corporate. I hated it, honestly. There's no better way of saying it. Um, but at the same time, I had actually been tutoring um, for a couple of years before that. So I just thought to myself, you know what? Um, I enjoy teaching so much. Um, obviously, the classes were really smaller and it was most cases one on one. Um, but I thought to myself, you know what? Let me just go for this professionally and just see how it goes. And um, yes, as an introvert, the one on one classes did not prepare me for the exhaustion I would feel. <laughs> oh gosh. Um, I would generally feel so drained in my first, first few weeks of teaching. Um, I was always so drained. At the end of the day, I generally do not want to talk to anyone because I've had enough of talking. I've had enough of engaging. Um, but I feel that through my tutoring experience, I think the one thing that always stood out for me is there's nothing as great and as fulfilling and there's nowhere else whereby you would actually see where your work is going or where your energy is going than in a classroom. In corporate, yes, I would actually still put in work into a certain project, but I think for me, what was, that, what was missing out of it all was me actually being able to see the outcomes of it all. So it wasn't necessarily so fulfilling for me because I couldn't necessarily see where my work was going or what exactly was I contributing towards. Whereas in the classroom, I'm able to see that. I'm able to see the change. Um, I'm able to see what I'm contributing towards uh, more than anything else. So yes, um, that's the reason why I went into teaching. 
Thank you so much, Palesa. You've got your hand raised. Um, yes, uh, for me, why I decided to go for teaching was um, initially I did not um, want anything to do with education because I come from a family of teachers and whenever we'd have conversations, they would always complain about how it wasn't the career for them and they wanted to do something else, but because at the time it was the only thing to do. So for me, it was like, okay, I have to be my parents' wildest dream. So I need to do whatever I want because they've worked so hard for me to be wherever I want to be, so for me to be able to dream and do whatever I want to be. But the thing that I found was whatever I did, I always found myself in academia. I always found myself tutoring or teaching or doing something educationally related. So in my mind, I was like, hey, God, is this you trying to tell me that this is this is my this is my home? So I was like, you know what, let me just not fight it, but let me just embrace it. So that's how I ended up <laughs> doing my PGCE. Thank you so much, Palesa. So what has come out from, from those answers is just the idea that even though a teaching might not have been your first option, um, somehow it just threw you back in. And I mean, that is why the PGCE program is there. So as soon as you've completed an undergrad and you find that teaching is your place and this is where you want to be, we do have the PGCE program or universities have that program for you to pursue this, this role as an educator. We've got a question then from Samora, Samora Menze. And Samora asks, what kind of school would you like to teach at and why? Daniel or Siziwe, would one of you? So I don't mind answering this one because I have a pretty, <laughs> one or two things which I know like I, uh, I would like, or in a school I would like to teach at one day. Um, I think that I, uh, I really want to teach at a diverse school. Um, you know, I think that a school that I, I learned so much when I was in school. I, I, thank you. To, thank you. You know, to my parents, I suppose, for sending me to a very diverse school. But I learned so much from my peers, um, you know, from people from so many different backgrounds, um, you know, in almost every uh, category. You know, there were people who were different from me. And I love the fact that I could learn from my peers. And I think that being in that environment where I'm not the only person that they, that, that students are learning from, um, you know, obviously, hopefully they, well, you know, hopefully they will learn from me um, because I'll be their teacher. But at the same time, I want to be in an environment where I can facilitate them learning from one another. Because um, I think, again, that's what that's what really develops people into well-rounded people and future leaders. So that, for me, is is a very important thing when it comes to um, the type of school I want to teach. And I don't know the, the exact schematics of it, but I think diversity is something that I'm quite uncompromising on. Thank you so much for that, Daniel. And I think our schools need a bit more diversity. So with the teacher going in with that insight, that is exactly you know, what the education system needs right now. We do have another question. And this is from Pumalela Boy. And maybe our POs, one of our POs who are on the screen would like to jump in here because um, Pumalela says, I'm currently doing PGCE. I'm about to go for PREX. How do I prepare for that situation? Have we got any takers for that question? See what PUA, you are more than welcome to answer. Thank you, Jade. Good evening, Mulweni Noanke. Um, I'm not here to answer the question, but I want to volume told one of the teachers, Sam. Um, can I volume told you to to help Upumelela because they're about to do their PGCE practicals? <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Pumalela, thank you for your question. Uh, I think it's very important when you're going to, in for teaching practice, uh, find out about the school where you're going to do your teaching practice. Um, you know, look it up online, 
And uh, if it's close enough for you to go and see the physical uh, school, you know, go there, go and have a look at the school, uh, visit the school. Uh, if it's possible, meet uh, the principal or at least the teacher uh, who will be mentoring you while you're at that school. Uh, it's great to build a good relationship with them. Um, and then, you know, knowing where the school is will help you to make sure that you are there on time. So your first, um, first encounter with the school, so the first time you visit, make sure you're there on time, you're early, uh, and that you look, you look good. You know, you need to look um, professional. Um, make sure, you know, that you're polite. Uh, ask the receptionist or the secretary of the school ask them where you need to park or ask them where you need to go, ask them, you know, everything you need actually you can find out from them. So I would really encourage you to make sure go there beforehand and you can find out all the, um, the answers you need uh, to your questions. I think that help, I hope that helps. <laughs> Thank you. Lufuno, you raised your hand, you're welcome to come in. Um, I think something else to note, um, Sam was my PO, is my PO, <laughs> um, but I think the best advice that I got is if the school has extramurals, um, at least join one extramural to actually help out with during your practicals. Um, it might seem a bit tedious because you're not necessarily a teacher yet or you're a qualified teacher yet, but the aim of it all is for you to stand out. And there are only a few things that you could actually do to stand out. And that is to um, contribute towards extramurals. Um, maybe also speak to some teachers. Some teachers are very much open to you contributing during, to, during lessons in terms of what you think, especially in an LO lesson, um, that would be great. Um, and be open-minded um, and try as much to gain experience, ask questions, um, um, ask about how the teachers cope, ask about um, the planning of the lesson, um, ask for advice. Um, yeah, just ask, be open, be there um, and be present in the staff room. Try by all means to greet. Um, do not constantly be on your cell phone. If you do get any admin um, sessions or lessons or periods, try by all means to always be doing work during that time. So use that time to actually do your university work. Sometimes we had to submit a report at the end of teaching prac. So use time that time to actually work. So constantly be working when you are at work, the same way you would be at work. Um, yeah, I think that's my advice. Thank you so much, Lufuno. I think we will wrap up the Q&A session with what they said. And again, thank you so much to all of our panelists. You guys were amazing, giving us insight into how JGF has impacted you. And of course, most importantly, how you plan on making an impact once you are in the classroom. Rudy, over to you. Thank you so much. Panelists, Jade, that was amazing. It's really great to see how, how excited and how passionate you are about changing the world because that's ultimately what teachers do. Now, Jake Scribal is a, 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 a PGCE scholarship. And so we have uh, up next a word from our selections manager, Amira Surti Pele, who will go through what you can do to become a part of the Jake Scadwell Fellowship. Hi, my name is Amira Surti Pele, and I am the selection manager at Jake Scadwell Fellowship. If you believe that you're the kind of individual who can make an impact and a positive change in South Africa's education system, I would like to invite you to apply for our PGCE Jake Scadwell Fellowship. You can do this by nominating yourself or another individual on our website. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or LinkedIn to see what we're all about. We hope to see you apply and we hope to see you make a change. 
Awesome. Thank you for that, Amira. So our eligibility quiz is placed on our website. And that is the first step you need to, you need to complete in uh, applying for, for the Jake's Hyvel Fellowships. Do make sure you submit it soon because applications close on the 25th of July. Requirements, a South African identity, you'll need to be a permanent resident or citizen of South Africa with an ID number. You need a transcript of your academic results uh, and you need to be in your final year of your undergraduate degree or be a graduate who already holds a bachelor's degree or higher. There needs to be an intention to study a PGCE at one of our partner universities, which is UCT, UWC, WIT, UJ, and the University of Stellenbosch. And lastly, be, uh, be, be willing to become a teacher and, and take part in our two-year NQT program and under the age of 30 years old. Folks, that brings us to the end of our session this afternoon. We hope you found the session as informative and as inspirational as, as we have. A special thank you to each and every one of our panelists and our facilitator for this panel discussion. From all of us at Jake's Hyvel Fellowship, we hope you have a happy Wednesday. Remember to slay every moment. Rudy, before we officially close, we do have a hand. So oh, we, wonderful. I don't just see going the to hands. Take, yes. Are we just going to take that comment? Let's, let's take that comment and then we'll wrap it up. Um, greetings, leaders. How are you? Can you hear me? We can hear you perfectly. All right. All right. Cool. Uh, so I just wanted to like ask just to be sure, because like I see um, there's mostly PGCE under requirements. If you're doing BA, that means you're fine, right? You don't have to do like if you're doing so, bachelor of education. Okay, already. so to answer un, answer your question, um, we 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 financially support uh for 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 PGCE uh programs, and and so unfortunately, as a as a B Ed uh student, you you wouldn't you wouldn't apply for 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 this fellowship because we target um PGCE uh students. If you are, can I come in there, Rudy? Yes, please. If you are in your third year of studying and you're moving on to final year, um, so if, if your fourth year of your B Ed would be next year, then you are eligible as well for the program, but it would just be for that final year and not for the entire four years, if that makes sense to you. Yes, that's, that's the case. I'm on my third year um, and I'll be doing my final year next year so yeah that's 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 my case okay so uh, oh the second thing i wanted to ask is that during my application not the el eligibility quiz but the main application eh? so um uh, i think there's like three sections or something so i did like upload my stuff but then on the section three whereby you like select Uti, where can you where do you fit the most in those scenarios I think I like made a mistake there and I saw that there's no back button. So is there, is there uh, a way to fix that or should I restart the entire application? Siwa, your hand is raised. If you'd like to comment on that. Yes. Um, hi, Tina. Welcome. And thank you for your question. Um, so you can email info at JGF. Is it info communications at JGF? Um, okay, Tuli, uh, I think Tuli will be more uh, suitable to do this. I didn't see you on the call. Please go ahead. Thank you, Siwa. Good afternoon, everyone. So, Brina, you can just email info at jgfellowship.org with your query, um, and then you will be able to then get that, um, that answer rectified. But you will not be able to uh, reapply because you've already submitted your application, but we can then correct it on our system. Please just email uh, info at jgfellowship.org. The email address is also dropped in the chat. Oh, okay. Thank you for that answer, ma'am. I haven't submitted the application, but then I've, I've done all the other stuff of 
have uploaded every document. So restarting the application would be, uh, you know, basically like doing everything over again. So should I submit the application and then inform them of this, or should I restart the application before I submit it? Like which Complete one would you advise? Sure, complete the application, Glina, and then just um, send that email through, and then we'll oh. be able to assist you. Okay, thank you very much. You guys are wonderful. Thank you. You're most welcome. So, all right, so I will leave. So the session is ended. Thank you again. We've got another question from, thank you so much for, for those insightful questions over there, Glina. And then it's Musum Pumalelo who's got a question or your hand raised at least. Yes, yes. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I just popped in because I had obligations in town. I just have one quick question. So I'm an undergraduate in Bachelor of Laws and at GFS they, they said to me that law is quite difficult and they were willing to take me for the one year program. Will this initiative still be possible in, in UCT and other universities perhaps? You think that's possible? Thank you. Ms. Pumalelo, is your interest to do a PGCE to enter the education faculty? Yes, as to actually become a teacher, should I qualify okay. for it? I'm considering it. Perfect. So see why you can go ahead. I see your hand is raised. You can go ahead and take this one. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Ms. Mpumalelo. Um, so the best bit would be you um, inquiring from the universities, all the universities that you would want to go to, because as we stand right now, it's only JGF. And we do have UCT tomorrow at four to five. We have Stellenbosch on Friday. We have um, Vets on Monday and then UJ on Tuesday. Yes, on Tuesday. So please feel free to come through to the uh, to the to the webinars and be able to ask to ask your question live and administrators and co conveners of PGCE will be here with us. How about that? Awesome, thank you. Rudy, I think we are back to you for our final words of the session. Let us play some music and remember to slay the rest of your evening.